Isabel Dos Santos is an Angolan businesswoman, Africa's richest woman, and the eldest child of Angola's former president, Jose Eduardo Dos Santos, who ruled the country from 1979 to 2017. In 2013, according to Forbes, her net worth had exceeded $2 billion, making her Africa's first female US dollar billionaire. Forbes described how Dos Santos acquired her wealth by taking stakes in companies doing business in Angola suggesting that her wealth comes almost entirely from her family's power and connections. In November 2015, BBC named Isabel as one of the 100 most influential women in the world. The Angolan government has been trying to prosecute Isabel dos Santos since 2018 for past corruption crimes that may have led to Angola's ongoing recession crisis. However, she remains exiled in Portugal. On 30th December 2019, the Luanda Provincial Court ordered the freezing of Dos Santos' Angolan bank accounts and the seizure of her stake in local companies including Unitel and Banco de Fomento Angola. Isabel has characterized the charges against her as trumped-up charges which were based on fabricated documents. She describes the seizure of her assets as a politically motivated attack. In the meantime, she is under investigation in Portugal and has since assumed the United Arab Emirates as her official country of residence. Two weeks later, the Angolan government announced it was preparing the legal battle for the confiscation of Isabel's assets in Portugal, a process that is already in operation in the form of letters rogatory sent to Portugal to stop the transfer of funds from Portuguese commercial bank to a Russian bank. Isabel dos Santos was born in Baku, Azerbaijan, SSR the oldest daughter of Angola's former president, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, and his first wife, the Russian-born Tatiana Kukanova, whom he met while studying in the then Soviet Republic of Azerbaijan. Her father's parents came from Sao Tome and Principe. She attended the all-girls boarding school in Kent, Cobham Hall School. She studied electrical engineering at King's College in London. There, she met her husband from Zaire, now the Democratic Republic of Congo, Sindika Dokolo a son of a millionaire from Kinshasa and his Danish wife. In the past 20 years, Dos Santos has held management positions in a number of companies listed in European stock exchanges. Isabel returned from London in the early 1990s to join her father in Luanda and started working as a project manager engineer for Urbana 2000, a subsidiary of Jemba's group that had won a contract to clean and disinfect the city. Following that, she set up a trucking business. The widespread use of walkie-talkie technology paved the way for her subsequent foray into telecoms. In 1997, she started her first business opening the Miami Beach Club, one of the first nightclubs and beach restaurants on Luanda Island. Over nearly 20 years, she expanded her business interests, leading to the creation of several holdings in Angola and mostly abroad making substantial investments in high-profile enterprises, especially in Portugal. In June 2016, she was appointed by her father as chairwoman of Sonangol, the Angolan state oil company. The controversial appointment in the wake of similar appointments of children of the president to key posts was short-lived as Joao Lorenco, the new Angolan president, fired her merely two months after being sworn into office. On 30th December 2019, the Luanda Provincial Court ordered the preventive seizure of personal bank accounts of Dos Santos, her husband Sindica Docolo, and Mario Felipe Moreira. According to the Attorney General's office, the three business people entered into deals with the Angolan state through the companies Sodium, a public diamond sales company, and Sonangol, the state oil company. With these deals, the Angolan state suffered a loss of $1.14 billion. The court produced a document showing that the assets and many others owned by Dos Santos had been acquired using funds from two state-owned companies. In the meantime, the Portuguese Attorney General's office had revealed that an investigation has been opened into the number of operations led by Isabel Dos Santos following a charge laid by Ana Gomes, a Portuguese member of the European Parliament. Following the seizure, she has assumed the UAE as her official country of residence. Since 2008, 
She has had interest in telecommunications, media, retail, finance, and the energy industry, both in Angola and in Portugal. In addition to her commercial interest in oil and diamonds, Isabel also owns shares in the Angola cement company Novasim Angola. JDM, a company held by Dos Santos, acquired 4.918% of Zone Multimedia shares from Spain's Telefonica. Through the Netherlands based Unitel International Holdings BV, a company controlled by Dos Santos, the Angolan businesswoman is the main shareholder of Zone Multimedia with 29% since July 2012. She is a member of the board of the Angolan Bank in Lisbon, Banco Big Portuguese, and through Santoro Holding, she holds 20% stakes at Banco Português de Investimento. She has other major stakes with the Angolan state oil company Sonangol through their mutual European law holding based in the Netherlands named Esperanza Holding in Portuguese Galpenarja. Dos Santos is a founding member and board member of Banco Big Portuguese which recently acquired Banco Português de Negocios, a nationalized bank. Since November 2012, Dos Santos is a non-executive board member of ZON. In December 2012, Isabel announced the invitation for a merger of ZON with Sonecom proved in March 2013 by the General Assembly. Eight months later, after the green light from the competition authority, the merger of the two companies was formalized on 27th August 2013. This was with the transfer of ZOPT, a special purpose vehicle created to advance the operation which became the owner of more 50% of the capital of the new group, the shares that Dos Santos and Sonecom hold on Zone and Optimus respectively. There was a capital increase of ZOPT through contribution in kind from 50 to 716 million euros, while Sonecom subscribed 358 million shares of the company by delivering 81.8% of its stake in Optimus. The Angolan businesswoman on her turn subscribed exactly the same number of shares of ZOPT through her holdings Kento and Unitel International delivering 28.8% of the stake in Zone. With this transfer of shareholdings in Optimus and Zone, Sonecom and Dos Santos became holders of over 50% stake in the merged company Zone Optimus SGPS. On this occasion, a new strategy for the company was announced by Dos Santos with a multi-market vision. On 1st October 2013, Isabel Dos Santos attended the first General Assembly of Zone Optimus. Isabel Dos Santos' investments in Portugal are in listed companies, which are therefore subject to official supervision by the Portuguese Securities Market Commission. In November 2014, Dos Santos launched a takeover bid for Portugal Telecom SGPS valuing the firm's shares at 1.35 euros per share in what was seen as a rival bid to a previous 7 billion euro offer from Altice. However, the offer made by Altice is on PT Portugal, not on PT SGPS. On 1st December 2014, the Angolan businesswoman formally registered her offer at the Portuguese Securities Market Commission. In January 2017, Unitel, led by Isabel, officialized the purchase of 2% of Banco Fomento de Angola from BPI for 28 million euros and now controls 51.9% of the bank's capital. The operation was approved by sector regulators, namely the National Bank of Angola, in December 2016. In February 2017, Dos Santos decided to sell her position in Banco BPI following the takeover bid launched by Kaiser Bank. Dos Santos arrived in 2009, stepped out in 2017 and won more than 80 million euros. Isabel's capital gain comes not only from the sale of the 18.5% holding on BPI but also from the dividends from 2008 and 2009 worth around 12.6 million euros. With 51% control of Condis, Isabel signed a joint partnership with the Portuguese Sony Group in April 2011 for the development and operation of a retail trading company in Angola. The entry in Angola by the Portuguese group led by Paulo de Azevedo will be performed by the Continente which plan to open the first supermarket by 2013 in Angola. She created Unitel in partnership with Portugal Telecom after a tender process she considered fair. Also, through Unitel International Holding, a platform for Unitel investments where Portugal Telecom has no presence, she acquired the mobile operator T Plus in Cape Verde and gained the license for the establishment of the second telecom operator in Sao Tome and Principe. Under this investment, Isabel announced during a visit to Sao Tome and Principe that Unitel will invest in education in the country to train engineers, 
managers, and other technicians and also focus on job creation. By 2015, Dos Santos owned a share of satellite TV operator Zap, which had, in December 2013, acquired the rights to distribute Forbes in a number of Portuguese-speaking countries, namely Portugal, Angola, and Mozambique. It had been announced that most of the content would be produced by a local team, complemented by content for the North American edition, therefore potentially allowing influence on Forbes content. It was initially planned that the first edition of the Portuguese language Forbes would be published during the second quarter of 2014. Isabel's holdings in the recent years include TransAfrica Investment Services, a Gibraltar-based vehicle founded together with her mother for the diamond business. Unitel International Holdings BV, based in Amsterdam, a company vehicle for Dos Santos' investments in telecommunications. Santoro Finance, company vehicle for Dos Santos' investments in Banco BPI, based in Lisbon. Esperanza Holding BV, based in Amsterdam and Condis, a retail business based in Luanda. Thanks for watching.